In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add initial data to your database, and that is called database initialization. And there are four ways I'm going to show you how to do it in this tutorial. In this first part, I'm going to show you two ways. And the first one is using data.sql. The second one is using command line runner. And we have using flyway migration and then using liquid base migration. So let's go ahead to get started. And this is necessary if you are testing your database and you want to add some initial data before users actually start using the database and populating it with data. So let's go ahead to start. I'm going to put away this presentation. So I have a simple application. I'm going to run it. This application returns a list of items. So I'm going to run it and it starts running on port 8080. And if I go to MySQL, you see that this is testdb, that is the name of the database, and it has only one table called brand. If I select, the table is empty. And also this application exposes a brand's endpoint, which I can actually access from my browser. So if I go to HTTP localhost and try to access the endpoint, so you can see that it returns nothing. So let's take the first part. So the first part says we want to use data.sql and it's quite easy. Go to your resources directory and create a file, call it data.sql. And you can now, in the data.sql, you want to write the insert statements for your database. So I'm going to just paste a few insert statements. So insert into brands, title, summary, created, at, created, at, created updated and, and content. So this is the insert statement you want to put in the uh, data.sql. And the next, thing you want, the next thing you want to do is to go to your application, the properties file, and you need to add these two lines. So they are initialization, initialization mode to always and spring SQL init mode to always. So once you do this, and I'm going to now refresh or rerun this application, and we can see that it inserts the data into the database when this application starts up. So wait for a second, and now let's go to the database to see if the data is available. So if I refresh, you see that we have the data inserted in the database. And also if I go to the endpoint and refresh, you see that we have the data coming uh, right here. So using data.sql is the first way. The second method is using command line runner. So what I'm going to do is to show you how to use command line runner. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to delete and I'm going to uh, run this application just to make sure that the data goes away. So I'm going to MySQL and I'm going to delete all the data there. So if I refresh, we see that the data is not there. So let's now see how we can use command line runner. To use command line runner, you want to create a file called, give it a name and that file or that class should extend command line runner and implement or override the run method. And in this run method, you want to use JDBC template to run your queries. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Go back to your, uh, Code. And here I'm going to create a file that extends command line runner. Let me call it data loader. And this file or this class is going to extend command line runner. And now it asks me to implement the method and I'm going to implement the wrong method. So I want to now use the JDBC template to execute the SQL statement. So I'm going to offer a JDBC template here. So I'm going to say private JDBC, JDBC template. And inside here, I'm going to now call the, the execute method of JDBC template to actually execute the SQL statement. So here I can now write the insert statement, insert into and then you can complete the statement. Now I have it on my clipboard and I'm going to just paste it right there. Okay, so I pasted it and I'm going to annotate this with a component annotation to ensure that 
uh, Spring Boot Spring Framework finds it a stack up when it does component scanning and it's going to execute the run methods and executes the uh, start statement. So I want to put a couple uh, add a couple more of uh, commands to execute. Let me just create two more, maybe just one more. Okay, so let's say brand A and this is brand B, this is brand C and this is brand D. Implement, so sorry, this is my mistake. So it actually implements command line runner. So I have this uh, right uh, line here. So I think this may be coming from still uh, cache. So I don't think this is a problem. So I'm going to stop this application and just rerun it and let's see if it executes these methods. Okay, so again, Spring Boot starts on four. Okay, so we have uh, five from here. So it's actually going to be created as updated apps. Okay, so let me go ahead to run again. So I'm going to save everything and then let's run. So if we take a look at the fields now database, we have updated apps and updated apps and created apps. Let's see. Created apps. So it's going to be with a D. Okay, so Spring Boot starts again on port 8080. And at this point, I expect that this uh, code, uh, this, uh, the command line runner runs and executes the command to insert into our database. If I go to refresh, I should be able to see uh, the data inserted here. And if I, if I go to MySQL and refresh, you can see the data right there. I also want you to know that the query is using the current date by calling the now function. So this is very important in case you want to capture the current timestamp when data was inserted into a table. So these are the first two methods on how to insert data into your database at database initialization in your split in your Spring Boot application. The next two methods using liquid base and flyaway migrations. I'm going to cover that in the next part of this tutorial. I'd like to stop here. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Please remember to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. Like this video and also let me know if you have any challenges whatsoever. And we'll see you in the next part.